Hello, my fellow gamers. Today, we have a special request from a viewer as to how he can improve the damage of his currently level 80 SSF Scourge Hardcore League RF Inquisitor. The problem that he's running into is that he isn't quite doing enough damage in yellow maps, but also he doesn't quite have enough damage in red maps. And uh, there's a couple of really basic things that he can really improve, even though it is SSF. And there's a couple of things longer term that he can work towards that will help his build a lot. And uh, keep in mind that I've only glanced at this. So it's a sort of video where we're going to be looking over each individual piece and maybe discussing some of the choices on the skill tree. So if you're interested in that, uh, stick around. I'm probably going to be looking at his flasks too, because flasks are generally uh, kind of underrated. But again, we are focusing on improving the damage. So you might as well do so. And to kick things off, uh, the weapon. So there's already a couple issues here. Unfortunately, the weapon that he uses has 86 spell damage. However, this damage does not affect Righteous Fire. It does affect Scorching Ray, but our primary source of damage will be the Righteous Fire. And there's a couple of really easy ways to get your uh, starter weapon. First of all, you can vendor craft the weapon by combining 40% of uh, quality gems so you get like i don't know a 20 quality uh fire gem and another 20 quality fire gem so a total of 40 and you vendor it with a white weapon that will always uh on a scepter or or a wand give you a plus one to fire gems weapon then you can aug it hopefully hit fire damage over time or even better uh either burning damage or damage over time and then you regal it. Obviously, at that point, you want either one of those mods or you could get fire damage overall increase as well. Uh, at which point you're going to be crafting with damage over time multiplier for fire as that is super easy to obtain with unveils. Another thing that you can go for is potentially spiritual aid and fear essences. It's a much higher risk strategy as it's not really easy to roll any of this stuff but it would most definitely help out a lot as your sort of temporary weapon. It's a really good early start. And as far as he goes, this would most definitely be at least a 20% damage improvement overall. TLDR, you can most definitely work on the weapon. Another thing that is very important for damage for Righteous Fire is obviously the amount of HP that you're going to have, but also the socket. So you can see that you've got flammability, life tap, flame dash, makes sense. Uh, you don't really get a whole lot of mana, and you really got to use that life tap. Especially if you have more than a 4 link, or especially if you have a 6 link, because life tap's going to be one of your links. And unfortunately, that's one of the problems that this player is running into. He's using Righteous Fire, Life Tap, Swift Affliction, and Burning Damage. So you can most definitely improve this damage by switching out Swift Affliction and Life Tap, and using Efficacy and Elemental Focus. This way, you should have, I think, 5% more damage. And on top of it, uh, you're not going to have the downside of duration just in case if you were to be using full Righteous Fire. So that's definitely something that he can improve right there. We've got Life Tap, Second Win, Enduring Cry, and Infernal Cry. This makes sense to me. A lot of people question the Infernal Cry, but it's super useful for those big harvest packs in general, just sketchy packs of mobs. Uh, this instantly gets rid of them very high value and also it's 12 percent more damage on a boss uh, for four seconds as you do cover them in ash and during cry obviously super valuable for sustaining with a inquisitor uh i personally think that the second wind isn't necessarily necessary i've been playing around with this a lot and i kind of like frost shield more i gotta say it allows you to face tank just a little bit harder with a little bit more safety and that's really important in rf you really want to be face tanking and uh holding your ground and just doing as much damage as possible. Molten Shell, Castle Damage Taken, Life Tap makes sense, although uh, I think the Life Tap isn't quite necessary. I'm sure that uh, it is kind of helping out. We've got Purity of Elements, Determination, Purity of Fire. So this is most definitely, if we check the other setup, this is just the usual Scorching Gray. Uh, obviously, with Life Tap, you do need... Uh, life tap on your Scorching Ray and on your movement skills so that it's permanently up. Uh, so that uptime helps a lot, right? So that's something to also mention that's important. But something that we can most definitely improve here is the Purity of Elements. Honestly, uh, it's overrated. 
A lot of people are using purity of elements. It most definitely helps out with resistances. The immunity to elements are good, but there are better ways of getting this. Uh, in my opinion, you can either craft, cannot be frozen with Rin. You can use the crab uh, pantheon for getting frozen. And then also what you can do is use one of the small pantheons uh, to get 60% reduced effect of uh, shock. And then if you have an open suffix on your gloves, you can craft 40% reduced effect of shock and chill. So yes, in some situations you're going to get chilled with 40% reduced effect, but if you're going with crab, then it's only going to be 10% if you upgrade your pantheon. What this allows you to do, which again, you're going to be immune to shock, you're going to be immune to uh, freeze, and then when it comes to curses, you don't really have to worry a whole lot because Inquisitor either has 70 or 95% or 75 or 95% reduced curse effect. So what this is going to allow you to do is run skitter bots. Skitter bots is are super value in my opinion. And they're even more valuable if you use unbound ailments on them. That way, it increases the uh, effect of non-damaging ailments, allowing it to apply, I think, a 8 or 9% higher shock and also a 6 or 7% uh, higher chill. Obviously, chill is reduced action speed for bosses, so it allows you to face tank more. And at that point, your skitter bots should be shocking for like 25 or 26%. Uh, more damage. So already with those little improvements, we've got 20% here, another potentially 5% here, plus a much better uptime because you don't have to rely on life tap. And you would have another 25% here, which should help out a lot. Obviously, Righteous Fire is one of those builds that scales through, uh, increases to HP, increases to energy shield. You need that flat damage, but you also need gem levels, right? You can see that these gems are pretty pretty freaking low right so once you start hitting your 21 gems you start flipping your gems for quality uh it ends up being pretty freaking heavy value and as for his gear it's looking pretty all right i gotta say there's a lot of focus on armor there's a lot of focus on resistances what you really want to be looking for when it comes to righteous fire gear uh in this current patch is most definitely those recovery suffixes so you can you can get 20 percent uh, increased recovery rate on your suffix and you can get up to like a hundred flat regeneration on all three of your gear pieces that being boots gloves and helmet you can also get i think flat regeneration as he does have uh on your chest piece so those should be your primary focuses I understand that the purity of elements is most definitely helping out with resistances but these gear pieces should be uh pretty improvable you've got the rise of the phoenix I think it's a solid choice. I think it's half is bread air. Uh, if you have access to this on SSF at such a low level, you should use it, but eventually a rare shield with either max res or an Aegis Aurora or shield with suppression. I mean, a shield with just extremely high armor, a shield with extremely high energy shield. Uh, it's just better, you know? You've got so much to stay. You don't really have to worry about a little bit more. I would only ever really use Rise of the Phoenix for the end game if you want to, if you have a lethal pride but uh, I just, I, I don't see that happening so early on in the game. Another big thing that a lot of people forget for the amulet is that you can roll the uh, two damage over time multiplier now, which goes up to 26% and it's a normal mod. This is not a uh, shaper mod or anything like that, as you can see on this amulet. It's just a normal mod and it's pretty freaking easy to roll, you know? Uh, he does have it. Obviously he can get a better one, but uh, if you don't, you should be focusing on it. And you can see that it's also got a regeneration. So that's pretty high value. Uh, <laughs> okay, this ring is a pretty large disaster. It's cool that it's a coral ring. Again, with Righteous Fire, you're just going to have an abundance of resistances, you know, because you get resistances from Holy Dominion. Eventually, you get Faith and Steel. There's a bunch of resistances there. You get this resistances here. You get the resistances leading up to this. There is just so much that you can get. So it's very high value to use Coral Rings or Vermilion Rings. But in this case, this Coral Ring in particular is quite weak. You want more HP. Again, if you want, if you could, you can get some regeneration. If you can get some plus two max energy shield, that would be super high value as well as we do have quite a lot of scaling for that. And the same thing really goes for the dexterity for the other ring. I do believe that he's looking for dexterity on these as he wasn't able to get it elsewhere. And judging from his skill tree, he's also using agility. But this is just the sort of thing that 
Honestly, when it comes to a level 80 character, his gear is just not looking that bad. His problem is damage, and I think as far as that goes, we found some uh, pretty decent solutions. Great gloves. Uh, as far as the enchant, not so much anything else. Again, high focus on life gear. When it comes to the gloves specifically, you can use apothecary gloves. You can uh, maybe farm up some early delirium essences. Get that juice for your Scorching Ray. It should be fairly easy to just get an open prefix glove with delirium. And it will tremendously improve your single target. Again, especially on the apothecary pair of gloves. And eventually you can move on to like hunter damage over time gloves and whatnot. But that's... Those are some long-term uh, investments. You can see that he's using a crystal belt uh, with a lot of life. I mean, pretty good choice. High energy shield. Do keep in mind that you are lowering uh, your regeneration in a way by increasing your energy shield versus uh, primarily focusing on increasing your life. Uh, as energy shield essentially will make you degen faster while life will make you regen faster, right? Uh, but yeah, if this is all that you have access to, it's a pretty good one, you know? It's got life, it's got energy shield, that's gonna improve your damage. Boots, uh, not so good. I would personally recommend that you get a pair of boots that have more life and have a larger focus on life. And again, those recovery mods. But I think Onslaught is the most important part in this. If you don't have a Death Rush, which they are pretty rare in SSF, uh, you should most definitely be getting Onslaught and Kill Boots with 20 MS. The 5 MS doesn't really make a difference, but the Onslaught is going to be permanently up as you are clearing uh, pretty freaking fast. And chat is pointing out that it's, there's apparently no craft on the belt. And that's something that uh, could most definitely help him with those pesky attributes. Or with all this chaos resistance that he's trying to get. Because right? there's really a lot of chaos res on uh, all of this gear that I'm seeing. Which, again, chaos res is important. Maybe if you're killing Awakener, if you're not that experienced with the fight. But when it comes to mapping, if you're breaking zero, uh, you're doing really well for chaos on a build that regenerates so freaking much. So yeah, I would really like to see the Onslaught on the boots. Obviously, the enchantment is an eventuality. You can get regeneration. Uh, that's probably what I would recommend going for. But honestly, for a level 80 character, the gear is just not so bad. But there are some improvements that need to be made for the damage dealing. And as for his flasks, obviously, Arch's Fire has a pretty heavy focus now on armor. Those molten shells are huge. And just the physical mitigation is so efficient with the new... Armor calculation. I would personally recommend a better uptime branded flask, so no, no reduced effect. But a flask that can roll, I believe it's called of the turtle, tur tortoise, which was the old iron uh, iron skin flask that gives you percentage increased armor. Super high value with determination, so keep that in mind. Uh, we've got split freeze removal which you don't really need and it does give you the less duration when it comes to your flask honestly for righteous fire you really want those recover charges on the hit to the people that don't know um there's no cooldown on that so if you have a flask that gives you seven charges every time you get hit on each one of your flasks your flasks are literally always up even during a boss fight it's pretty freaking insane so if you have those extra alterations make sure to put in the time and uh, it's going to be pretty high value Obviously, you do need a Quartz Flask to move through mobs, so a perfect choice there, even though the Spell Suppression isn't particularly useful for our setup. And then you've got a Ruby Flask. Uh, this is optional. Again, you can see he's got uh, Charges, Recovery, Reduced Effect. I would focus a lot more on staying alive through Flasks. They're so strong in the current patch. The duration on them is just so incredible. And you've got a choice between a Ruby Flask for a little bit more recovery as he's using, and then also a Basalt Flask which gives you 20% more armor. I found that the Basalt Flask is more useful for me so far, but possibly in the very, very end game, if I get uh, a replica Soul Tether for that Corrupted Soul on my belt, I might be switching over to Ruby Flask because I might be lacking a little bit of regen. But yeah, I think those are some of the major improvements that he can do for his gear. Obviously, there's a lot more that he can get. You know, you can get like Awakened Amulet with plus two to gems and uh, damage over time. And you can get that pretty consistently too. So some people like to run a Righteous Fire Helmet. Uh, so that they can get a six link with a Horror and Elder uh, mod over here for clear. 
those are long-term goals, nothing really that he needs to worry about, but something that he should be probably working towards. As for his skill tree, honestly, I haven't noticed anything odd, okay, other than this life mastery. I don't know if the website is actually showing correctly. It could be that the website isn't quite working. No, it is working. Okay, so immediately, a couple issues. As much as the pathing on the skill tree makes sense, you can see that he has recovered 2% of life when you ignite a non-ignited target. He's never igniting any targets. Righteous Fire does not ignite. It burns. So that's already a big problem because this is essentially a wasted passive. You've got a 20% chance to cover enemies in Ash when they hit you. 20% more damage taken for them. You know, less movement speed. That's valuable. But 20% chance for when they hit you. I think this passive is really, really optional. Especially if you're using Infernal Cry. Something that would be much better for a build such as this one. Would be the fire damage per 20 strength. As uh, you should probably have around 400, 500 strength. So that's pretty decent value. But most importantly, it's the 20% to fire damage over time multiplier. With minus 30 to fire resistance. Again, I understand that he doesn't have those mods, but if he just crafts fire resistance onto his belt, then that alone would be enough to, again, give him 20% more juice, and that's gonna help a lot with a single target and with his clear. His fire, his life masteries, as we've looked over, uh, some pretty major issues. Plus 50 to maximum life, super high value. That's going to be a big damage and defense upgrade. And then also regenerate 2% of life per second while moving. That's really nice for clearing. It's not a necessary node, but it's definitely something that's going to increase a lot of comfort for him. Uh, wow, his mastery on damage over time is also incorrect. So he's got increased effect of cruelty, which literally doesn't do anything for this build, unfortunately. And the thing that he's missing is 10% less damage taken from damage over time, which does reduce the amount of damage that you take from Righteous Fire. Super duper high value, most definitely need to look into that. Look at the fire masteries over here. We've got increased mana reservation efficiency of skills, but honestly, I don't think he even needs it. Or maybe with this setup, he does need it. But again, if he switches to the other one, he should be able to not just use the skitter bots with unbelt ailments if he were to pick up the determination as 25% increased mana reservation efficiency he could also fit in a defiance banner into the build which is like 60% increased armor at all times and whenever you do drop it you taunt a target which reduces their damage for about six seconds by 15% it's quite gigantic so really you want to make it so that your mana is pretty much at the zero point especially when you're using uh, life tap on your molten shell, right? Because you're never really spending mana when it comes to these setups. So definitely something to tweak there. And keep in mind that if you can free it up, this mastery can also give you ores from your skills have 15% increased effect on you, which with, does work on the Defiance banner and it works on your determination. So something like that is going to be super duper efficient for your build. Very high value should give you as a baseline on his amount of armor, at least 3,000 armor. Super high value. Picking up Divine Judgment. Okay, so <laughs> Divine Judgment is strictly worse than Heart of Flame. The reason for this is that this does no doesn't give us anything. And I believe from what I remember, this just straight up gives you 6% increased um, damage. However, this does give you access to a mastery, but this mastery is not particularly good. The only reason why you should ever be picking up Divine Judgment, and these are little tweaks, but things like this matter, is uh, if you have a Timeless Jewel over here. But that's obviously something that he doesn't have access to quite yet, so definitely something that he can uh, tweak right there. The start looks good. Some people like to path through these nodes. I personally think that at this level, it would be better to do this. I think I accidentally clicked that, so don't worry about it. As for... Oh, this reminds me, I didn't do Uber Lab on my character. Obviously, for Uber Lab, you want to be picking up Righteous Providence. That helps you a little bit, you know, 10% increased damage, and then you get a little bit of strength and intelligence. I should probably run that on my Righteous Fire character, because I already totally forgot. As, again, it's not really a big deal. The bath thing looks great over here. Uh, if you can pick up the jewels, I already scouted out his character a little bit earlier. So, uh, he does have jewels such as this one, which is 8% fire damage over time multiplier. Which, again, keep in mind that fire damage over time multiplier, any form 
of damage over time multiplier is additive with each other. So these multipliers aren't as big as something as global multipliers on your gear, but they're still incredibly valuable and they're always going to be better than any form of increased damage that you can acquire through a jewel. And then 7% maximum life is always worth a passive as well, right? So even though these jewels can be two or sometimes even three passives, they're still going to be point for point worth it if you have access to them. And I guess something important to mention too, that if you've got open sockets the way that he does, uh, and especially if you pick up Divine Judgment with this chance to Shock and Ignite, this is never a valuable node for us because it doesn't work on Skitter bots as they are minions. But if you tweak around your sockets a little bit, for instance, you put this stuff over here, you can run an Armageddon brand which deals fire damage, that's the primary reason why you would use Armageddon Brand as it doesn't have chance to ignite anymore, with exposure, and that's 10% more damage taken uh, by the target. Sorry, not exposure, combustion, which lowers the amount of fire resistance that a target has by 10. So if you've got those open sockets, that's something that you can do in the meanwhile, and that's going to increase your damage a little bit, again, but every little bit counts. At this point, we've gotten like 60% multiplier. You're almost killing a boss twice as fast at that stage, right? So pretty important stuff. 20% chance to defend with 200% armor. I don't think you need this node. I think the increased armor from equipped shield could be better. The determination is usually what you should go for. But if you really want that armor value, you should go for 600 to armor while affected by a guard skill. The reason for that is because you're always going to have a guard skill when it matters the most is when you're dying, right? Because of the castle damage taken setup, and then obviously using full molten shell. So I think that's the highest value node right there. Over here, you got the corrupted blood cannot be inflicted on you. Uh, totally fine. You know, you can also go with the reduced effect of curses and run vulnerability map, at which because of that stage, you've got 95% reduced uh, curse effect. But the corrupted blood is really good. If you really want both, you can also pick up Sanctum of Thought and uh, get the reduced cursed effect over there. Again, you can see high focus on armor. I think as far as the skill tree goes, looking pretty good. Definitely got to work on your masteries. Other than that, at this stage in the game, I think uh, that's pretty much all that he can improve. So, I, I, I guess that does it. I don't know. Hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, hope that it uh, helped out somebody with his Righteous Fire character. All right, have a good one, everybody. Bye.